exploration of food as medicine, oh, not wow. medicine as food, as we have it. There are side effects, there's ways to prescribe it, but the main thing about food as medicine is we're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to share the enjoyment. Just what you brought here on this table really impresses me. I sometimes go to a talk and it's bread sandwiches and cakes and cookies and everything that I'm going to talk about that's bad for you. And all this is just good and beneficial. But what we have to realize is the title is Food as Medicine. You have your papers there and it says there, Food as Medicine for all gut types. We've all got different gut types. But there is something that's very much the same about us all. And that is the law of pH. pH of the digestive system plays a big part in how your biomes work. You all know what a biome is. You're a biome. You're a group of people. You're interacting. You're talking. It's a biome. It's called the collective conscious biome. And you're all individual. And you all thrive. What do you thrive on? The truth. Companionship. And you all support it. The symbiotic relationships with each other. Your relationships. We have different relationships with bacteria in these different biomes. Now, believe it or not, you have a, an oral biome. It's a complete, like a little city full of people. And they all behave differently. And they all react differently. And now we impose on them things that kill half the population. And then the other population attracts baddies and gangsters and murderers and thieves. And all the goody guys die out. So that's why I want you to ask you, what is the pH of your mouth by own? And what are you doing when you clean your teeth? Now normally inside the mouth, and anybody who'd like to challenge me can do so, but as far as I know, it is officially supposed to be down there between yellow and orange. It's 6.5, officially. So we will color it in at about 6.5. Okay. It's acidic. Now, there's your tongue, there's your teeth, are washed in 6.5. We have tooth enamel that can handle that. But what do we go and do? We have toothpaste, fluoride toothpaste. No, fluoride, killer. Now here's your tooth. in the gums. Around them normally at that pH, you've got a group of bacteria that we call beneficial commensurate. And they are washing <coughs> your teeth in what all day? What is the best mouthwash in the world? What pH must that saliva be in order to maintain the health of the bacteria of the teeth? 6.5. So you know what we do? We scrub them with toothpaste and we wash them with mouthwash every day. And we rinse and we rinse. Is that 6.5? No. No. It's now alkaline. Now the body has to challenge to get back to the normal one. And the beneficial bacteria, the lactobacillus lacti and the, the right um, reutery and bifidobacterium and all the rest, they can't look after your teeth. They give up. And fluoride gets in there. And what fluoride t tends to do being the most electronegative substance on earth, fluoride attacks the gums. It kills the cells every night. Okay, so you've got this mess. 
So in the morning your breath smells really bad and you go, ah, let me rush to the bathroom. What am I going to rinse with? Mouth. An antiseptic mouthwash to kill all the germs in my mouth. Where did they come from? From the antiseptics. Hello. There's nothing natural about that. Scrub by all means, but use the right pH. And that's where we started our journey, Jim and myself, in investigating and getting all the pHs of all the biomes right. So we're going to now make some medicinal food that's going to be good for your teeth. The best mouthwash in the world is saliva. The second best mouthwash comes from lactic acid, from milk. And that feeds up all the good bacteria. The bad ones here at the neck, when you've got an abscess, are the gram-negative bacteria, which have little latching points for very, very dangerous germs called endotoxins. The tooth decay is caused by Staphylococcus mutans, which eats up the teeth of children, especially children who clean their teeth with alkaline toothpaste and then go and eat sweeties and bread and biscuits and then all that stuff sticks on top of the tooth. Where's my pencil? And we call it plaque. And plaque accumulates around the tooth, right? And then all the bacteria that sits in here it's called Staph, Staphylococcus mutans. When the gums start bleeding like crazy, lots of blood getting in there, it also goes into your bloodstream. If you have consumed something really bad, and there's a really bad germ going around, it can now get directly into your bloodstream, into here, and it will go to your heart, and you can drop dead. Don't look at me like that. My children are not going to brush the teeth ever again. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, those are two things you don't do when you cure cancer. For God's sake. She did it. <coughs> and she makes and she makes and she makes. And she take it to hospital and she give to patients. Yeah, you eat that, yeah? <laughs> the cancer all gone. Well. She didn't realize that the people who were funding the yes. research in that cancer institute had a vested interest in which company? The margarine company. <gasps> so jo Dr. Jaina Budwig was dismissed from hospital, yeah? Because she cured cancer. Same. With this cottage cheese. And with flaxseed oil. Now I give you an extra challenge. And we add another ingredient to it. We have now glutathione mixed in here. See? The number one antioxidant, the number one healer, the number one anti-inflammatory. <coughs> And you know what? I'm covered in goosebumps. <laughs> it's, Hallelujah. It doesn't taste too bad. It doesn't taste too bad. It tastes so nice that instead of butter, you can spread this on your bread. It's yummy. There it is. You can flavor it up. That is the Budwig protocol. <clears throat> if you go and Google Budwig protocol. You will find many descriptions of how it's made. There are many variations. What we love doing is when the marsh is about this high, we add some water, we add flaxseed oil, we add the MSG to it. We also add something very important. Probiotics. Now when you add probiotics <coughs> to your mixtures, these are 15 strains of the probiotics. They're specially cultured for us. It's anything that's cultured about me is not bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> you add it to the buttery. <coughs> what have you now got? You've got more allies, haven't you? Mm. You've been on a recruiting and you've got more members sitting in the room here. <coughs> you synchronize, you resonate. So, to keep the doctor away, you have a spoonful of Budwig. Mm, see how delicious food is. Now, you can do more with all these foods. You can start converting them into cheese. And that's the part you're all going, aha, let me see. I can give you a block of cheese. All you do is you wrap it. I use the wicking cloth. And depending on how long you soak it, you wrap it like this and you put it in a towel. You squeeze the moisture out and you sit on it and you put a brick <laughs> on it and all the moisture goes out. This is what I call a stage one cheese. Okay? This is the one quite a hard one now and then it's very easy to knead it up and model it. Whey, will yes. it whey protein powder. No. It's quite expensive but it's, it tastes horrible but when you mix it with the cottage cheese it starts to change the bacterial composition. So you put whey powder and the MSG and the salt with it and you mix it up and what you get to the delight of the children is something that tastes like Melrose cheese spread. Mm. Mm. So you've got two things you can put on your butter. You said, um, your butter instead of your bread, yes. <laughs> okay, so you can have a cheese spread or you can have the budwig. But if you've got cancer you need about at least two, two, two big spoons of this a day. It's not difficult to get that down your throat. And when I was on Radio 786 for 10 years, people still remember the name Sue Fissa. A gentleman by the name of Yusuf sent me a letter and said, <coughs> My niece has just been diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. He said, Anything you can do because she doesn't want conventional treatment. And I said, The Badwick Protocol, 
look it up on the website, here's the link. I said also take vitamin D3. Lots of sunshine, I'm getting plenty. Doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> and the last thing, with cancer. Iodated salt, please. This costs 20 rand. This is iodine. 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 So Yusuf did that with his niece and five months later I had a letter from him saying thank you, thank you, first to the Almighty, but we now have total remission of cancer. There's no cancer in her body after five months. Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's a miracle. You cannot get cancer unless you are deficient in what? I do. I do. Wow. Dr. Brownstein is the big mouth on I do. And so I know people don't like testing on animals. They like to they prefer testing on humans, obviously. But the rats he treated with iodine. As compared to the control. We call them murine studies in science. Murine studies. You don't say rats. <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't get them to 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 how do you say get cancer he couldn't produce cancer in the rats with enough iodine in them hmm. what am I saying Take where's in. all the iodine gone where has all the iodine gone so they tell us we've all got enough iodine because we enrich salt with iodine. So you're all okay. Is that true? There's no. two types of iodine. You know about that. There's two types. There's one type of iodine for the throat. Thyroid. Thyroid. It's stored here. <coughs> There's another type of iodine that's stored here. There's potassium iodine. And there is elemental iodine. Dear Watson, elemental iodine costs 20 rand. This is what kills the germs. What about Lugol's? Lugol's iodine. What is it? <coughs> what about Lugol's? Lugol's <coughs> is the right iodine. solution. So you take 5% of the potassium iodide, 10% of elemental, and you mix it so much iodine with so much water and you can charge 20 times more for it okay but a drop or two of lugol's is going to do the job for everybody a little 80 rand bottle of lugol's iodine is good enough but when it comes to fighting the covid virus zap it on the spot with this how do you take enough. it how do you take it i'm glad you asked that question <coughs> it gets us on to the next way. This is how you take it. Lentils. These are lentils. So, here's half a packet of lentils. You take half a packet of lentils and you soak them in a jug with about a cup or two of water. And you add half a teaspoon of iodine to the water. And after two days, all the lentils soak up the iodine. And we've tested them. We have tested them. Okay? So we know that the iodine content. The little lentils take up all the iodine. Then you just eat them raw. Mm. Have some. That iodine or the Lugol's iodine? You can use Lugol's iodine if you want to treat the thyroid as well. The potassium iodide, the other one, 
from Lugos. All you have to do is forget about all your fancy salt and buy this one. And you'll get the potassium iodine. Easy. Easy. The only difference between this and Himalayan salt is a 2% difference. And you can go on and on and on about what is in the one salt and then the other salt. This one comes from the sea, they add the potas potassium iodine to it. The other iodine you get yourself from the elemental. What about saltic salt? Have you heard of saltic salt? Celtic salt is lovely. But is it expensive? I've, um, I've got a salt museum. I have salt from all around the world. They're all very different, but it's only that 2% that is different. Have them for your enjoyment. But if you want iodine, eat your sprouts. Grow them. This costs, um, what you've got in that, there's 10 rands worth of sprouts. And they haven't even got their tails. Let me show you what they look like a little bit later on. These are the sprouts with tails. Now you get, you get um, the brown lentil and you get the green lentil. You've just tasted the brown lentil. Here's a green lentil. And these can be added to salads. You can bake them. When they, before their tails are like that, and you like something crispy, you fry them in a pan and you pour on some beaten egg. You have a crispy omelette mm. like you won't believe. They are delicious. Can cook even those? the kids will like these. How, how can, you, can you actually cook with those sprouts? lentils? Pardon? That's in the, can you the cook with the lentils? Yeah. Two days is that, and then this is three days or but four. But will you be able to cook with those lentils? You can cook food? with them. That if you want more nutrition, just remember that when the sprout comes into contact with water and becomes a sprout, it's got 600 times more vitamin C. Mm. Oh. Oh. Sure. And cooking will destroy that. Yeah. Mm. Another thing about a lovely lentil sprout, I'm a blood type O, and I'm a blood type O secretor, wow. which means that my antigens are in my digestive system. I react to the normal lentil. It don't like me. Sprouting destroys the lectins that are blood type specific, so yes. everybody can have some. So, yeah. Is that just from adding water and iodine as well? Yes, they have the water and the iodine. They give you for free the vitamin C. What they are very rich in, if you have two tablespoons of that a day, are the B vitamins. Now without B vitamins, nobody's going to feel good. The B vitamins are in the gut what make your serotonin, and all your neurotransmitters, you can't do it without the B vitamins. You get them for free in there. You can also take other forms. There's something very interesting is yeast. Yeast is high in selenium. And it's high in B vitamins. It's highest in vitamin B1, which is called thiamine. And that is one of the super drivers of all the processes in your body that generate the feel good. Now I want you to taste this. I thought it was brewer's yeast but it's called nutritional yeast. Now you know the umami taste comes from glutamate. And if you're scared of monosodium glutamate, taste this. What do you add it to? Okay, now what about blood type? And how does that connect to the gut biome? Some foods are better for different gut biomes than others. We are not created equal. And people who facetiously say, well, at least we all eat the same at the table, there's going to be confusion and chaos at the dinner table. You say, what the chaos and confusion inside your gut? I can smell it from here. <laughs> so, we are different. Flat type B is the dairy buff. Any amount of dairy products. Again, if you ferment the dairy, you start to break down the lectins that cause the disagreement. When you sprout the lentil, you break down the lectins that make the conflict. The blood type O non-secretor is brilliant eating lentils and boiling them up and putting them in curries and all the rest. Doesn't suit me. So what I do is I sprout my lentils and then I stir fry them, I add them as vegetables. When I've cooked rice, I stir in these sprouts it expands the rice, so you've got so much rice. 
plus the lentils, mix them together, you've got so much rice and no one's going to know the difference and say, why does it taste so delicious? And you add some of that brewer's yeast, um, nutritional yeast, you like it. Mm. <coughs> they don't use the name bruised yeast anymore. So nutritional. It's actually nutritional yeast, but it's a, yeast is yeast. It's beneficial. The one yeast <coughs> that gets out of hand is that girl called Candida. We don't want her. This actually displaces Candida. It sends her all the way back. She belongs in our gut, but so do the other commensalous yeasts. And there are a lot of them. So I'm blood type A and about two years ago I went to Sigrun and, yes. she, and every time I eat dairy now I just, I like have cotton wool in my head. I've tasted this cheese, yes. I miss it terribly. Is there anything that I can do? So blood type A's and dairy are not the best of friends. Mm -hmm. okay. but fermented dairy, yes. Pure milk, forget it. Yes, I a, a splash in the tea, yes, but it, it, it doesn't agree with your biome because your biome is the, what I call the, the budgies of this one. Your, your, your gastric acid isn't as intense okay. um, as the O. Okay. The blood type B has got, I think it's about 200 times more milk digesting bacteria in it, the blood type Bs. The blood type A's don't have that. What they've got more of are the pro-fermentable for starches and grains. They're the ones who digest grains better. Okay. So there's never a problem with, with blood type A eating bread. If they're an asecreter, they can eat bread. If they can't, they are a non-secreter. They don't secrete the antigen. So I'm gluten-free now as well because that's also not great. But I don't yeah. know, maybe I've also with stress and my gut's gluten -free out. Gluten-free and all the rest. Now, yeah. the reason why the gut has to come right and the different biomes, the first thing we have to do is get this part right. So if you say, this doesn't agree with me, you're probably telling me there's something wrong in the tank there. People like that generally get reflux and heartburn and ulcers. So, so what, what is our pH here? Is it more alkaline? It is more alkaline. Okay. Let's see if I've got a green coat in here. Green eyed monster, I don't think I have. But the stomach itself is where we get the worst problems with acid. And they must be extremely, extremely acid. In here, it's 2.5, huh? Wow. Now, you've tasted apple cider vinegar. Okay, that's your stomach acid pH here, yeah. 2.5. Mm, I don't know if this is the right. Ah, yes. Woo, this tank has to be very acidic. <coughs> okay. Now, down comes the food to a less acidic zone. I haven't got a green coat. Anyway, each biome is a zone and each of the pHs change. They happen to sit with chakras and they connect to communication. The colony of biomes here, 90% in any of these biomes, is not you. Your genes are only 10% your saliva, they're only 10% of your gut. Who is the other 90%? The water. Strangers. Strangers. Not Bacteria. you. It's not self. Mm. Is that bacteria stupid? Mm -mm. You won't believe how brilliant bacteria is. They even communicate better than the collective conscious group. They have a system called quorum signaling. What? Quorum sensing. They work in communities. They say, you know what? This gut here is a nice place to live. But tell you what, there's food coming down here. If we want to live in here and we want to share the same food, ah, oh, thank you, here's a green. Okay, so let's say this one is this pH. And then we have a blue one here, which is that pH. 
this becomes very mysterious, guys. Very mysterious. This is, this is Alcala. Okay. There's all these dharams here. So their colonies like alkaline. This likes acid. This likes more or less neutral. This likes just just acidic. So obviously now Karen gave us the final answer. The bottom one is more acidic. Not the very acidic, the more orangey acidic. I'll eventually find one. It's this kind of acidic. Okay. Not too bad, but definitely not alkaline. Can you see? So we've got different people here, we've got different people there, we've got different people there, 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 and only 10% of it belongs to you. <coughs> Just take the bottles away. Back. <clears throat> so we eat our food in there. It goes through there. It's just slightly alkaline so you don't get a burning throat. <coughs> God protected you from reflex by making that not acidic. It goes into the stomach. Now what happens in here? When the acid's like that, it bubbles and boils, and the blood type O by Om has got the strongest stomach acid, the hunter-gatherer. So you can take a piece of meat and you can chew it and the whole thing will digest and go all the way through. But the blood type O, if you take a chunk of bread, not the same, it can't get through there, it can semi-digest, but it's going to ferment, it's going to become pathogenic, it's not going to be lovely lemon yellow pH 2. So most people now, what they're trying to do is get very clever and take antacids and things and pour them down there and they're making the stomach less acidic. Weak now. See? That can no longer dissolve meat or digest it. So it doesn't digest properly. So in the middle of the night, you've got chunks of food in here. Nice, nice, nice. You don't want to go through because the, it's not digested. So says, I'll tell you what we do. This acid, it's weak. When it's strong, there's a valve here. He says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And the only way you can close that valve is when the stomach acid is that acidic. It will close, yeah? So what? That's how it should be. But what actually happens is, because the stomach acid gets weaker and weaker and weaker, this thing doesn't close, so it starts coming up here. La, 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 la. Now we've got ew, now we've got acid reflux. So grab the Rennies, grab the uh, Tums tablets, everything else, everybody real alert. Let's go alkaline. Ooh. And then all the alkaline pours into the stomach. How well are you digesting your food? When you sit here and you say, I can't eat this and I can't eat that, think about your stomach. Think about the other 90% of you. Do you think they're happy? Now they've got to get out of here. <coughs> this food's now got to go into the next tube. And the next tube is alkaline. How are you going to get alkaline? Have you heard of bicarbonate of soda? Yes. Yes. Now everybody's terrified of salt because of sodium. <gasps> All that sodium! What's my heart gonna do? Now without sodium, your pancreas and your liver cannot create bile and bicarbonate of soda. You've got two liters of bicarbonate of soda which squishes out of your pancreas and your liver to neutralize all the stuff before it gets in here and then it becomes alkaline. So you need the sodium. If your stomach isn't strong enough, you need the chloride. So do you know what the Islamic people do before a meal? The Prophet said, peace be upon you. Take salt before a meal. Why? 
because you need the chloride there and you need the sodium there. Where does it come from? From rocks, from the ocean. It's free. Take everything you hear with a big pinch of salt from now. <laughs> Enjoy it in your food. It's amazing. Anything good, actual mainstream media or whatever tells you yeah. that. Yeah. The media will tell a little bit of truth with a big lie. Yeah. But also all the health food health food companies are, are the, the telling you of all this wonderful food they're making and you look on the ingredients and you want to die of shock and horror at all yeah. the practice. And, and, and look at this. Big banners in the shops. I thought that was bad for you. MSG free. Yeah. Oh, we're so clever. Exactly. The body recycles glutamate, monosodium glutamate and glutamic acid. It's the same chemical. It attaches or detaches from the salt molecule. And what that does in your body, it balances your pH. So if you too acidic somewhere, it attaches to sodium and it neutralizes that area. Now, if you're too alkaline in another area, it attaches to the acid and makes glutamic acid. It goes around your body saying, you need some acid, you need to be alkalized, and it balances everything out. From the rest, it is actually an amino acid. The most important thing that glutamate does in your brain is it processes the axis between serotonin and dopamine. <clears throat> no glutamate, no glutamine. No brain chemicals. Then they say, oh, it causes neuroexcitability. Take it out of all my food. Do you know what switches on the excitability channel? It's called calcium. Why don't you take all the calcium out of all the food in all the supermarkets if you're going to be so stupid? What is the switch that switches on neuroexcitability? Heart attacks, inflammation. It's the calcium channel. What switches off the calcium channel? Who's its sister? Electrolyte. Magnesium! When you tense, have a bath in Epsom salts. It's magnesium. It relaxes. It switches off. Now, <coughs> if you want brain chemistry and rocket science, 300 times a second in your brain, you are switching between dopamine and serotonin. On, off, on, off, on, off. Is there any MSG in the brain? No. It can't get in the brain. Only L-glutamine can get in the brain through the blood-brain barrier. MSG is so dangerous in the neural synapse. Why? Because it switches on the dopamine channel. So what your body does is it takes the glutamine and it puts it into a, a glial cell. It's a reservoir. Then it pulls in a little bit of salt and it produces an on switch onto the calcium and it makes a dopamine signal that excites the chemical. Then the magnesium comes and it switches off the calcium channel. Now the rest of the glutamate that's in the glial cell, it only uses half. The other half is converted by an enzyme into GABA. So, MSG plays a role in that, but not the monosodium glutamate. That only happens beyond the blood-brain blood -brain barrier, you have salt, you have a calcium channel, and you have glutamine, and then you have glutamate. That action is inside the brain, and it doesn't matter how much MSG you eat, are you hearing me, it will not affect that. Finish. Unless... You have got a leaky blood-brain barrier and you have a leaky gut. Then the game's over. As glutamine, it's as dangerous as calcium. You have to learn about the biochemistry. Or you have to trust your body. Do you listen to your body? Would you listen to a gut that's 90% belongs to somebody else? Would you? Would your body kind of you have to. make it known? Yes. Really I ignore. want a chocolate. <laughs> I want some cake. I'm miserable. I need some comfort food. Shame, poor me. I'm pre -menstrual. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? It's 90% that can lie to me. 
It's only 10% oh, wow. of you there. And remember that too. Here's your brain. Most of us have got one. <laughs> There's a nerve in the vagus nerve. Oh, yes. Vagus nerve. It's hardwired to your gut. So now come a whole new class of drugs. If you're eating too much and you're getting too fat, they're using antidepressants, the benzo drugs, the, the, the um, tranquilizers to help you lose weight. Somehow it signals to the stomach that I'm full via the veins. Yeah, full. But because these swimming drugs work in the gut, there's this feedback loop going on and it's negatively affecting the way you feel. The way you feel is negatively affecting your gut. You're getting a backfiring brain link from the, from the head to the stomach. And a lot of the film stars have been swimming now and showing off with these new drugs that give you a feeling of fullness, safety satiation, right? The drugs that can make you feel like that. They're relaxing your brain. They're taking away anxiety, panic attacks. They're calming your brain down. Right. Wonderful. Tranquilizers. What is your brain saying to your gut? It's causing paralysis of the gut. When your gut is paralyzed, the food is not going to come out, it's going to solidify. You haven't got peristalsis anymore. Those gut muscles can't squeeze any of the poop out of your body, so it stays inside and it leaks back into your brain. These are what the doctors are doing. You trust your doctor. But we'll give you a tranquilizer, it'll make you feel better. And now listen to your body and eat lots of cream cakes and chocolates and all the rest of the crap and lots of sugar because it makes you feel good. It makes your teeth rot. Clean out your mouth with fluoride and all the disinfectants and then take lots of antibiotics and wipe the whole lot out. That is not food as medicine. <laughs>